I'm happy to be with you, uh, all uh, Rocky supporters, uh, this evening. Uh, last week, uh, our newly elected uh, governor of New Jersey, uh, Chris Christie, I had the courage to buck the what I call political correctness. He begged the citizens to help him reverse uh, decades of unaffordable payments being made at the expense of the general taxpayers of New Jersey that were going to the all-powerful uh, public sector unions in that state. Uh, long before that, however, uh, President Ronald Reagan explained that, and I quote, uh, government does not tax to get the money it needs. As you know, government always finds a need for the money it gets. A big difference. And um, two centuries earlier, what we have is Ben Franklin, who warned, as many of you are aware, that uh, newly, the, the newly forming government at that time, he said that any government that taxes its citizens as much as 12% of its income, essentially, would be regarded as a cruel and uncaring government. Just think how far beyond those thresholds we are. Now, now Franklin, um, as if anticipating both monetary policy uh, in the 20th and 21st century and our own situation today, he also wrote that when we are obliged to issue quantities of debt in excess, that's how he put it, it pays uh, itself off by depreciation, in other words, debasement of the currency or inflation. Now you keep in mind that these were our elected officials and advisors uh, many, many years ago uh, talking. Likewise, 234 years ago, uh, the father of economics uh, and modern economics, Adam Smith, he stated quite clearly the four key axioms uh, of establishing a healthy uh, and efficient uh, tax system. He too was clear about the economic impact of unbridled federal spending and debt. He said, quote, when national debts accumulate to a certain degree, there is scarcely a single instance of their having been uh, fairly and completely paid. Uh, that was a very uh, modest way of saying ruinous. And he did use those words in his text. Alexander Hamilton, uh, the architect of uh, America's first structured debt and debt repayment program, echo echoed uh, this wisdom, uh, both of Franklin and of Adam Smith. He said, there is a tipping point beyond which additions to the national debt become deleterious. Where this critical point is cannot be pronounced, but it is impossible to believe that there is not such a point. And it's that reason, as opposed to Jefferson at the time, who was a bit more, a lot more conservative on the uh, fiscal issues, it was, it was because of that Hamilton, as an outgoing Treasury Secretary, our first back in 1795, sought to warn about um, and I'd say clarify his stance on debt. So in his final report on public credit, he said it is essential to prevent that progressive accumulation of debt which must ultimately endanger all government. It's not just the private sector, intrusiveness and, and uh, incentives, it's all government as well at all levels. So most of us here recognize that our nation may already have crossed the, and traversed this dangerous uh, threshold of debt in terms of our, what, ability to uh, service the debt, uh, defease the debt, uh, or fund the outstanding uh, liabilities that have been created. We've leveraged the financial condition of future Americans more severely, I would say, than any and all together of uh, the Latin American so-called banana republics. At the same time, Washington is destroying the incentives required to generate the jobs, the incomes that would, uh, as I say, defease the outstanding debt, defuse the potentially crushing taxes, and prevent hyperinflation. So the only way, in my opinion, uh, to reverse these evil outcomes uh, locally, Michigan, and the U.S., uh, is to go for the government's jugular, and that's spending. 
All the talk about tax regimes, important, debt, yeah, budget, deficits, and so forth. It all becomes, sadly, hand wringing, smokescreen, and a dangerous distraction if we haven't gone for the jugular, which is the real tax, the real bogey, spending. So let's not be distracted. What should be our focus and our fiscal Bible, if you will, for monitoring uh, the behavior of our candidates and elected officials? First, will they use uh, Article I, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution as their line in the sand for permissible federal spending? And we have to look at Michigan in much the same way. Two, are they willing to declare a fiscal crisis and roll back uh, the size of federal bureaucracy, programs, staffing, perks, uh, and outrageously uh, costly benefits as I began my comments with New Jersey. Uh, thirdly, will they unleash and reaffirm the superb economic growth engine that we have in the market system and, of course, the incentives that power this market system? And fourthly, will we, as masters rather than as slaves, compel Washington and Lansing to control themselves by, and, and do so by exercising our eternal vigilance uh, and, of course, unleash our threats of humiliating defeat for those who violate the public trust. And finally, uh, Simone Bolivar said it best, I think. He said, it takes more strength to maintain freedom than to support the weight of tyranny. Have we still the strength, endurance, wisdom, and resolve? Well, I know this audience does. Uh, let's vow to build on this momentum as we support Rocky. And I thank you.